Hi, it's uh, winter time here in Brittany and um, I'm doing a bit of winter beekeeping. Thought I'd show you how to make up this Danon frame from start to finish. A lot of people ask me how I make them up. Uh, Hi, bit of winter beekeeping here in Brittany, France. Time of year to make up your frames for next year. Uh, I've got this uh, Dadont frame here that I've made up. Um, what I want to do is show you how I put it together. Basically I buy them in kit, which consists of four pieces, a top bar, two side bits and a bottom bar. And basically I want to show you how I put them together and the easiest way to give you the best frame with the strongest finish. Pretty straightforward and I'll also show at the end how we wire it up and then end up with our wax frame complete like that ready to go. Just hold it a bit closer so you can see what the finish is like. This frame is actually one I used last year but I've just rewired it and put in a new sheet of wax. You can see the beads have already put a bit of propolis on it in certain places but this is just uh, to show you what the finished product's like anyway dad on frames putting together of right what I want to show you first is how I now my frames together what it is I get all my side pieces all out on the table ready I then using um, 1.6 millimeter galvanized panel pins. Now these are a little bit too long I don't know if you can see that but they can be these are uh, uh, 40 mil they can be 30 mil, 30 mil is probably better but 40 mil is fine if you are happy with a, long, with a, a better fix. So basically I'm nailing them in at a slight angle like this you'll see why after. So I knock them all in it's always fine if you're making up 10 or 15 frames, it's better to make them up in a batch. The same as if you're making up a, a load of hives or something, because it just means you get more done quickly and you're not toing and throwing so much. So these are the side pieces, but these are the bits that connect to the top bar, which is this part like that afterwards, but obviously on the vise. So I'll just nail these in. And for the other end, where the top bar, the side bar meets the bottom bar, I put one nail in pre-fixed to make it quicker when you actually put them together. Just a vertical nail this time. There we go. Right, we're on to the next stage. I'll just show you before I start in the vise so you can actually see what I've done. There's my side sections, so one end that is actually meets the the frame is got angled, slightly angled nails. You'll work out the angle yourself once you fix them in. The other end's just got a vertical nail ready to pop in when you join the whole thing together. Right, here we are. Um, just to explain, I've got a, a very basic standard workshop bench vice. All you need, something that's strong, well bolted in, because you're going to be doing hammering in. But I'll try and explain. So this is the top part of my frame. That sits in the vise like that. Do it up fairly tightly. Pick up your first side bar that you've just pre-nailed. And you find your hammer, which is on the table. Okay, so you're going to basically knock these nails in at a slight angle that carry through into your frame. So it's pretty basic. It does take a little bit of time to get used to knocking your nails straight. If you're not a carpenter, you're not a chippy, okay, whip your frame out, turn it round. Pick up your other end, hold it between your fingers like that. You won't hurt your fingers. Even if you miss the nail, you're unlikely to hurt yourself. So knock it in like that. 
Thanks for the nice and square home. Now, we've got two sides that are joined. I don't know if you can see that. So they're pretty straight, square, pretty straight. What I do now is I pick up the end bar, okay? That then sits between these two. If you can't see it, I'll show you again in a different way afterwards, but I'll try and show you. I'm putting one end on the back of the vise, but the nail is overhanging, so I can still knock down the top nail in, and this vise supports the frame as I knock it in. It's really important that you don't jar the frame at this stage. So let's knock the top one in. If you couldn't see me knocking that in, I've just put that nail in there. Then we're going to flip it around. That then goes anywhere on the vise. And then, done the next one. So basically there you are. Our frame is solid, put together, straight. Nails all neat, nothing sticking out anywhere. Happy days. End of. Right, I'll probably show you one more time from a different angle because it wasn't the best video, but limited resources and all that. Anyway, let's do it again. Top bar in the vise, pick up your side piece, knock it in. Flip it around. I'm putting the two pieces, or well, that nail there, you can see, rests on the back of the vise. But just overlapping so you get the full support of the vise. Put your bottom bar in, and knock it in. Flip it over, and do the same. Like I said, it's really important that the vise supports all the weight from the hammer because you do not want to start warping your frames at this stage. I'm going to put it back in the vise now because I'm going to show you how to wire up this frame. Okay, another thing I want to mention before I start wiring this frame up is that this frame is wired horizontally. So the wires go from this end across, and there's four holes, and they start at one end and finish at another. You can buy frames, dadont frames, the same as this, that are actually wired vertically, this way, in a V-shape. Now, that works fine, but they're not as strong as they could be, because if you imagine this is pulling this way, so all the pressure is forcing inwards, and it's actually resting on either side of the frame and either side of the bottom bar, where if it's wired vertically, in the V-shape, what it's doing is actually pulling it apart because really you are leaving to chance these weak spots more. So always try and go for the frames that are wired horizontally. And what I'm using is um, 0.45 of a mil stainless steel wire. And I'll wire a couple up so you can see how I do it. It takes a few minutes to get used to doing this and also your fingers can sometimes get snagged by the wire but there's a couple of little tips that you begin to learn when you start doing this a few times that are really quite important when you start putting your frame and the wax in at the end of it. So, that's my top bar. I wanted just a little bit more wire fed through for this one. There we are, right. And what I get is I get my long nose pliers. Hold at the end there, wind it around a couple of times and just pull it through like that. And that does, it actually tightens up the whole top section. Forget the bottom for now, that's still attached to the bobbin. Okay, yes, you might say, oh, you're wasting a bit of wire there, you know, you could only go around twice, but I like to go around three or four times and then tie that off. Like that. So, a good few times wound around, then just get your little snippers and just snip it off short for now. And I'll show you what we do that after. So, at the other end, I've got this piece here. Now, I'm going to cut that off about 60 centimeters in length, wind it round again. Now this is where you need to make sure your 
uh, frame is tightly in the vise. All you're going to do is this, just pull it a bit and you'll hear it stretch. And from then on, your wires are nice and tight. So around we go there, tie it off, lots of times. Now, get your snippers as before, cut it off at the base. I just want to show you something here that's really important. When you put your wax on, what you want to do is your knots of wire need to be actually pushed right back. So with your blunt pliers, rest it on the wire and just poke them right back to the base. So you get plenty of room to put your wax sheet in and there's no problem at all. I'll do one more that we prepared earlier. So in the vise. I also find that if you're making all your knots very, very short and trying to wind wire around that's, that you haven't got enough of, in other words, you're trying to save wire all the time, you'll end up cutting your fingers more because the little bits of wire that stick out tend to stick in your fingers more when you're trying to be a bit of a miser on the, on the wire. It's not the cheapest of wire, but one bobbin will probably do you 80 to 90. That's one bobbin. Um, I actually haven't got the weight here, but... Well, one size bobbin usually do the small size bobbin usually does you 50 frames. So with my long nose pliers again, wind that round. Let's tighten that top up. Snip it off. And onto the bottom piece. Tighten it up, nice and tight, easy to turn around when it's like that. It takes a bit of time to get used to, to knowing how much wire to, to cut off, how much to leave on. It's a bit of give and take really, but you'll soon pick that up. Snip those bits off. And again, I'm just going to use my blunt pliers just to push these knots right back in the base. I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and show you on the video. What I've done is I've got the knots right back tight to the wall of the left and right hand side, well the left side on this frame in particular, because basically I start and finish my frame wiring on the same side. It just makes it easier and more convenient for me. Other people finish on the other side because they sometimes wire it up with less holes, but it depends what frames you've got, but it's better to stick on one side. The reason why I put these knots really tight is also when my wax sheet goes in here to this groove, which you can see running along here, you do not want anything sticking out that will necessarily snag the snag the wax sheet. Anyway, now we're going to move on to waxing it up. Just wanted to mention to you before we start putting these wax sheets onto some bare wired up frames that um, you can buy these uh, Dadon wax sheets uh, ready made, which I do. Some people make their own up, but it's quite time consuming. Um, I buy these in a five kilo block. Um, it's not cheap, but it's the best way if you're making your own frames up yourself and probably the most economical. If you buy them in smaller packs, it starts to get even pricier. So I suggest you buy them in a, in a five kilo block, knowing that'll make you up enough for 50 frames. Uh, also, if you're making up honey supers, don't forget you only have to use half a sheet of wax per honey super, so it's not, not that expensive. The other thing I wanted to mention to you, and probably the most important thing about wax, is when you handle it, be aware that the colder it gets, the more brittle it gets. And when you're handling wax in the winter time, which is when you're going to be making up your frames most of the time, it does get very, very brittle. And you could drop a box of wax like this and shatter the whole lot in any time, you know, very, very easily. So just be aware. The other problem is when they get too hot in the summer and you're trying to peel off, I'll show you, you're trying to peel off any sheets of wax. If it's too warm, you end up bending the wax so you lose its shape. Today's about 10 degrees, so you can just peel off like that, no problem at all. But they do still remain brittle and it's really important you know how to handle it because it, otherwise it becomes very expensive. 
Right, before we proceed to actually putting any wax on the frame, I just wanted to, as briefly as possible, explain to you how we go about doing that. Um, I'm using an old battery charge that I've had for years here. What, what that does is I use that to heat up the wires that you can see on the frame. Very briefly, it heats the wires up to above the melting temperature of wax, which then means the wax sheet melts onto the wires, and then you withdraw the current and the, the wires cool down very quickly. Um, you have to kind of experience doing it a couple of times to get good at it, and it's not the easiest thing to do, but with a bit of practice you soon become quite good at it, even though I sometimes I still make a mistake and melt the whole thing right through both sides of the sheet of wax. But it doesn't matter, because as long as you've got the majority of it fixed properly to the wires, that's that's the, the beauty of it really. Um, what I'm going to do is actually rig the video up above this unit in a minute and then you'll be able to see how I do each, each wax sheet individually. Right, I hope you can see this reasonably clearly. Um, I'll do it a couple of times so you can try and understand how it works. So I'm picking up my frame like this. I've got my wax sheet and I'm literally going to drop the wax sheet into the groove. Now I can do that because basically the wires I've just fixed on are nice and neat and tidy like I said before. There is no little bit sticking out, they fit flushly and basically the wax sheet fits nicely in there. I'm then going to put this wax sheet onto this block of wood that I've cut. And this is a block of wood slightly smaller than the frame so that when I put this frame over the top of the bit of wood it actually pushes up onto the wax and then in other words the frame is sitting on top of the wax the frame and the wires are basically sitting on top of the wax sheet. So then what I've done, I've got my battery charger here, I've got my two electrodes on the end which are all they are are two rusty old nails. But all I'm going to do now is is go halfway for a start and just touch the two. And you'll see the wax melts very quickly because the wire heats up as the currents pass through it. And then basically you put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. And by doing that you're only allowing a very short amount of current to go through the wire, but you're not going to melt all the way through the sheet. That one's melted pretty well there. There you go. So basically go from halfway and whichever side you touch, that's the side you'll have the heat. So I'm going to put the heat this side now. There we go. I'm just melting. You can see the, the wax is re-solidifying very quickly because we're fairly cool now. 10 degrees today. It's as simple as that. And there you are. The wax is already dry. If I flip it over you can see that the wax sheet is really solid. It comes through both sides and yet it's fixed absolutely solidly and clearly. I'll show you again anyway on another frame. So I'm putting my, my wax sheet into the frame again. Okay, and then I'm going to flip that over, making sure that the, the wax is really well seated into that groove. Put it on top of that piece of wood, so the frame overlaps all the way around, and the back of the wax is really tucked up into there. So I pick up my electrodes, and very simply, if you're quite quiet, you can hear the actual machine kick, kicking in every time it actually de delivers a current when there's a connection made between the two pieces of wire. Two electrodes I should say. If you leave it too long what will happen is you'll heat the wire up so much it'll just work, melt right the way through the whole sheet of wax and it won't stick back together and very often you just cut the sheet in half. So it's important to kind of have a go slowly first. Here we are. Nice nice sheet of wax melted onto the frames. No problem whatsoever. I'll show you one more time. And obviously you do exactly the same when you're making up smaller frames for your honey supers or different hives. But 
it is good to make your own because you do a better job as far as I'm concerned. Just make sure you wait long enough to see the wax dry before you lift up the off the frame. Here we are. So you can see both sides there. There's clearly, I don't know if you can see that really closely. You can actually see the wire coming through, and sometimes it's through the other side. But what it enables means is that you are the wire is actually melted to the wax, and the wax is sitting on the wire itself because it's, it's been melted on so there you go that's how you make up your frames and put wax on pretty simple really just a bit of organization a few basic tools save yourself an absolute fortune